Yes, the archivist y'all interviewing Matt Brevner. What's good, man? How you doing? One of the up-and-coming artists out of Vans. So tell us, who is Matt Brevner? Uh, Matt Brevner is a kid from uh, New Westminster, British Columbia, as are you. And um, yeah, I like to make I like to make music. You could say uh, I'm a producer and MC, an engineer, and uh, co-founder of B Sharp Productions. We run three studios: uh, one on Bridgeport, one in Steveson, and one in Yale Town. And uh, we track and produce for local artists, as well as work on uh, production for like TV placement and stuff like that. And what makes you one of the best up-and-comers in Van City? And what is it about Matt Brevner that is unique and groundbreaking? Oh, good question, Trevor. Good question. Um, I think it's all opinion. I like to think that I make good music. And I know that I work hard on my craft. And I love what I'm making. So uh, I, just, I just like to think... I like to hope that other people feel the same way about my music and they can see that I put the effort in. I think what sets me apart is... Uh, my my interests, like, my musical interests are very diverse. I don't like to stick to one genre, like, let's say, boom bap or electro or whatever. I like to just take take whatever I like to listen to and just make, like, an, a centrifuge and make my version of it. Um, yeah, man, anything from folk to jazz to whatever, I just, I like to take it and mash up and put my spin on it, and hopefully people appreciate that. And how is the success of your first masterpiece record, Magnum Opus, and tell us the plan for your next record in the future. Uh, we went through a couple thousand copies of Magnum Opus. Uh, it, was, it was a good response. Um, considered it was it was pushed independently. Uh, you can't really expect much more than that, I suppose. But yeah, in the last year we've rocked like pretty much every club in Vancouver. Um, done a bunch of shows in Japan. Uh, yeah, things are going well, man. People are starting to recognize talent in Vancouver. I think the Olympics was really big for that. And... Uh, yeah, it's all in the up and up. Uh, right now, I'm working on a bunch of projects. Uh, if you heard, if you heard my album, uh, artist that was featured heavily on it, her name is Fembot. Uh, me, her, and uh, Kai from the Shada is another local Vancouver group. Uh, we formed a group called the Hoodwinks, and uh, we're working on an album right now. It's it's cool. It's kind of got like a like a folky reggae feel to it. It's really laid back, mellow, but more like serious music. Uh, you can expect that in August and. I'm working on my second album, my solo joint, it's called Electricity. Expect that around August as well. Uh, it's heavily dubstep influenced. Um, dubstep just kind of sparked a new, uh, a new fire in me as far as production. It's just, I, I find uh, hip hop, especially sample based hip hop, can be very repetitive and it, the production isn't as complicated as let's say some electronica. So producing dubstep is really uh, yeah, it's, it's lit my fire for production again, and I'm going heavy at that. And anything you like to share about people from being born and raised in New Westminster, with the multi-talents making it such as Justin Morno, myself, Jakin, and yourself, on whatever they pursue? Uh, I think the thing about New Westminster is, uh, since it's such a big school, like 2,400 kids, um, and it's in, it's in the middle of the lower mainland. It's almost like a cesspool in a sense, like everything good and everything bad can be found within like a 20 block radius in New Westminster. So therefore I like to think that you're faced with adversity at a very young age. So if you know what you want, you really got to go pursue it. And I think it's instilled a uh, good work ethic in people like us, I would say. And when you lose the loved one that you look up to, what does it do for you? on the side of making music, playing, and writing? Uh, it's kind of... M my whole story is uh, I graduated from New West Secondary School in 2006. And uh, after that, shortly after that, that summer, I moved out to Richmond to uh, live with my grandmother. She's She was in the early 90s at the time, just helping her out around the house and, and whatnot. But, uh, yeah, I remember I promised my grandpa on his, on his deathbed, I told him, you know what, like, I'm going to do... I'm going to make you proud of me one day, and... I'm just going to work on what I love to do, because I know that's how we would have wanted it. So, yeah, funny story, like, I moved out to Richmond in 06. Right after I moved out to Richmond, I lost my license, and so I pretty much lost connection with all my friends. The train wasn't up yet, so it was just like, it's like an hour and a half bus ride in New West, so I wasn't really seeing nobody, right? <laughs> so I, I built, like, a really modest studio. I was like, you know what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take this music shit seriously. So I built a really modest studio, like, Pentium Celeron with a little oxygen... What was it, Oxygen 41 key, like piece of shit mini controller. I worked on beats for like a year. 
And then uh, I attended um, the Art Institute in Burnaby. I initially signed up for the four-year course, and I dropped out. <laughs> I ended up dropping out after one semester, just purchasing my own gear. Something I don't regret at all. I feel like music schools are definitely overpriced. Like considering that there's no guaranteed job placement after the after the program, I think like thirty thousand dollars for a course is a little steep. Um, yeah. So I, I like to think that uh, my grandpa passing away it really like woke me up. And I was like, okay, well, no more fucking around, no more like selling bags and partying all the time and shit. Like I'm gonna take this music stuff seriously, and that's that's what leads me here today, three years later. And tell us about B Sharp and what that is building for you as Matt Brevner. Um, B Sharp's allowed me to have brand placement as well as a team of people that I can trust around me. I feel like we have some very talented producers. Um, Danny Alvarado, who makes excellent pop music. Uh, my boy Kron Scythe, who's featured on Magnum Opus. Uh, he, he does like the classic sample hip hop. He's really dope at it. Him and Illegitimate Crew been at it for a minute. And, uh, yeah, we just got a team of really, really solid artists, man. We got the Shadas on our, on our label now. We got, uh, the Hoodwinks, like I said, that new project. And I feel like we're just, we're a perfect number of people right now that, uh, are all down for the cause, and it's just a really dope environment to bounce ideas off one, one another. I've always been the type of guy that likes to work solo, so for me to kind of have this new working environment of people around me that I feel like we're on the same w wavelength, it's, like, it's indescribable, man. It's just been awesome. And I'm really stoked to see what we're going to come up with in uh, 2010, for sure. And how was the feeling at performing at Shambhala in 2009? <laughs> that was crazy, man. Like, fuck. I remember Dave and, and Jeff, uh, they were always telling me, man, you got to get up You gotta get up to Shambhala. It's nuts. And I was like, yeah, okay, whatever. You know, treetop festival in the woods sounds like a, sounds like a drug fest. <laughs> well, it pretty much was, but it was crazy, dude. Like, I'd never rocked in front of that, mon that many people in my life. Uh, just the adrenaline was nuts. The whole vibe was awesome. Everybody was super supportive. And I'd really recommend for any local, like, artist of any genre trying to really, like, come up and get good publicity, just go up to Sean Blanc and hand out CDs, man. Like, fuck. I, I, a lot of people have hit me up after that after that show, and it's just been great. The whole experience has been awesome. And how is the radio rotation going for your music, and what is your goals to expand across Canada? Um, I, I kind of went around, like, uh, you can request three of my singles on the Beat 94.5 off Magnum Opus, uh, Never Give Me My Friend, featuring Fembot, Bump It Like That, also featuring Fembot, and, uh, Up and Down. Um, my whole path, I guess, to local, uh, to, to get on the local Top 40 radio station, it's kind of a strange one, I didn't really have a radio sniper, or anything like that working for me, uh, someone just submitted it, someone I didn't even know submitted it, and people just started requesting it, and, uh, yeah, next thing I know, I got homies calling me and saying, yo, man, you're on the beat. And I'm like, no, I didn't believe it, right? And, uh, yeah, but it, it turned out really good. So, hopefully with this next project, uh, we got a little bit more money behind the pro behind our uh, behind our upcoming project, so we're going to do it properly. i um, hoping for a uh, cross-Canada distribution with the next project. Uh, yeah, we're just going to keep at it, man, keep pushing. And tell us about your music videos recently, Culture Shock, that you have released, and how's the persona on the look of Matt Brevner? Um, Culture Shock, we shot, we had Alex Yalzerov shoot it. Uh, he does all the video work for B Sharp Productions. Uh, we went out to Japan and we shot the video and I, I don't know, man. Like, I was going out there anyways and Alex was really dying to get on a trip and we're like, well, fuck, where else are we going to shoot the video for Culture Shock? It's about being in Japan. Like, why not? Let's just shoot it. And uh, yeah, we just had fun with it. Um, I hope people I hope people appreciate it. We tried to keep it uh, pretty sh pretty sharp imagery and and yeah, vivid, interesting to look at. Uh, as far as like your second second part of that question, what's my persona? Um, you know what? I, that's, it's hard to say. And anybody anybody who really says they have their persona figured out to a T or they know truly who they are, it, it, uh, that can't be fully true, man. Because we as human beings, we evolve every day. You know, we're like we have so many layers to us that we're always changing. I like to know where my interests lie, and I like to know where my creativity lies, but how I'm perceived by other people, that's in, that's that's not in my control. I can just be comfortable with myself and do what I like to do. And, uh, but hopefully my persona is a positive one, I like to think. And what's the next steps for Matt Brevner to dominate Western Canada and the spotlight for a solid, established artist? Um, Just shows, man. Keep doing shows, keep doing shows, keep spreading the word. 
I'm going to have some shows coming up in Washington, hopefully later this year. I'm trying to get back to Japan. I'm trying to think bigger than Western Canada, just because, uh, I don't know, I've, I've had successes in other places, and I feel like why limit myself to where I'm from. And I feel like, especially in Vancouver, there's not much left to do besides the big, like, stadium venues. And in order to do those, I'm going to have to leave first, blow up, and then come back. So hopefully when that day comes, Vancouver will show me love and, you know, hold up when they're all...